So if you've seen any of my Blender videos before, you would know I'm absolutely obsessed with hard surface modeling, but a lot of people ask me, how did you actually learn this stuff from scratch? Well, the answer to that is practice, but I know that's not the answer you're actually looking for. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I got started with hard surface modeling and everything that you need to know to get started. So let's hop right into it. So before we can even dive into what exactly hard surface modeling is, you need to understand the fundamentals. Spend the next 10 seconds looking around your room and just see what's in your room, what's next to you, what's around you. You'll probably see a computer, a cell phone, a table, maybe a computer monitor, and all sorts of other stuff. And most of these objects probably have very hard and defined edges. That is essentially all hard surface objects are. Anything with a hard defined edge is a hard surface object. Now on the other hand, anything curvy or smooth or more organic without hard defined edges are what we call organic objects. So things like fruits, vegetables, people, human beings. These are all examples of organic objects. So you have two types, you have hard surface objects and you have organic objects. And that's really it, easy enough, right? So now that you know what hard surface modeling is, what you need to know is how the fundamentals work, how exactly hard surface modeling works under the hood so that way you can get started. So when it comes to hard surface modeling, the first thing we need to discuss are bevels. Every single hard surface object on this planet has a bevel, even if you can't see it. So take a knife blade, for example. You think it would be perfectly sharp, but if you were to zoom in on a microscopic level on the blade, you'd see a bevel there. So the first thing to understand about hard surface modeling is that every single object has a bevel. It might be a big bevel, it might be a small bevel, but there is always going to be some sort of bevel there. So make sure that whenever you're adding in an object, you're also adding in a bevel. So how do we do this in Blender? Well, it's really easy. You select your model, you go to the modifiers panel, and you click on the bevel option. That is it. Now you have a bevel applied to your object. And adjusting the size of the bevel is really easy. You just tweak the slider. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and you can also turn the bevel on and off if you want to see a before and after. Now, another reason to use bevels is that it actually helps define the form of your object. So bevels are an incredibly powerful way to add definition and form to your models. And without the bevels, your model could actually look quite boring. Another thing that bevels do is they capture light. So what I mean by that is if you add even a small little bevel to your object, you're gonna see a very nice highlight around the edges, which brings power to your model. Light reflections on bevels are incredibly powerful. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into the different types of bevels and their settings because I have plenty of tutorials on my channel about that already. For now, just remember this, bevels capture light, define form, and create definition, and you should always be using them on your hard surface objects. Now, there are actually two main types of bevels. One is called a chamfer, and the other is called a fillet. They're similar, but also different. They're similar because they're both still a type of bevel, but a chamfer is a bevel with one segment, generally at a 45 degree angle. Now on the other hand, fillets are bevels with multiple segments, so a one segment bevel is a chamfer, and anything else is called a fillet. Now there are plenty of situations where you're going to use one over the other, but for now, I just want you to remember that these are the two main types of bevels you'll be using. Now next up on the list we have booleans, and you're going to be using booleans a lot in hard surface modeling, and if you see my my videos before, Boolean is the only workflow that I use. Booleans are my absolute favorite, and unfortunately, there's a big stigma against Booleans because they create n-gons. Now, to be fair, Booleans can actually be quite harmful to your workflow. For example, if you're creating a character and you run a bunch of Booleans through it and then try to deform it, you're going to end up with a big mess. So you have to be careful when you're using Booleans and also why you're using Booleans. Another situation where Booleans can be quite harmful is when you're doing sub-D models. You see, by nature of booleans, you'll oftentimes be creating n-gons, and sub-D with n-gons in general will not get along. Now, there are lots of exceptions to this rule, and there are situations where I use sub-D and n-gons all the time, but that's a topic for another video. But if you're doing things like concept work, static assets, rendering, or anything similar, booleans are going to be the most powerful way to work. In general, just remember this. Quads should go for sub-D and deforming, whereas n-gons and booleans can be useful for things like concept work, static assets, and things that otherwise won't be bent or deformed. In fact, if you want to see me using booleans in a game asset workflow, check out this video right here. 
It's on the development of a full hard surface game asset using only booleans and angons. So with all that being said, needless to say, I am a huge advocate of using booleans and of course using angons in your workflow, so long as you know what you're doing and you're using them in the appropriate situation. And with new modern weighted normal techniques, shading and things like this are no longer an issue like they were in the past. And that brings us to our third topic, the topic of shading. Now, I could go on about shading for ages because shading is an incredibly important topic. I'm sure you ran into situations where you're modeling and you get these weird shading issues on your mesh. This is normal, but fixing it can be tricky. So let's start with the most basic fix, which is adding in a weighted normal modifier. And essentially all a weighted normal modifier does is it takes the normals of the vertices along a bevel and make sure they're completely perpendicular to those larger flat polygon faces. So for example, in this image, you're going to see an example of the vertex normals a little bit skewed. And then when you add in a way to normal and make sure they're completely perpendicular. And what this is going to do is avoid any sh sort of a shading warps that kind of go over the bevel. So if you ever have a random object like the default cube, for example, and you add in a bevel and see weird shading, the best way to fix that is by adding in a way to normal modifier. So this is a big reason why a lot of old tutorials focus so much on clean quad based topology, because before way to normals existed, that was the only way to actually get clean shading. However, times are different, workflows are different, and with the invention of weighted normals and different modeling techniques, n-gons and booleans are totally fine. However, weighted normals will not fix every single situation. In fact, there are many situations where adding in a weighted normal will not work. So for example, if you have a curved surface and you have weird shading on that curved surface as a result of a boolean, you're going to have to use a little bit of a different technique because the weighted normal modifier will not fix it. Weighted normals is mainly going to work on those flat surfaces. So generally in those situations where you have booleans running on curved surfaces and the shading kind of goes crazy, you're going to have to use a little bit of a different technique, a different workflow, and a different approach. Now I don't want to get into all the different situations in this video, it would take way too long. So if you are interested, check out our hard surface ebook over on our website. It's free and it has a lot of different situations where you can use different hard surface modeling techniques to fix those shading issues. I also have another video outlining different situations where weighted normals might actually not work so I'll link that video right here and now we have the final topic of hard surface modeling which is the topic of artifacts now a lot of people confuse shading issues with artifacts but they're two completely different things so shading issues refer to those issues you get on a mesh where you for example are running a boolean and you get some really nasty shading and this is an example of a shading error however artifacts refer to those weird shading situations that come as a result of overlapping geometry. So they're both shading issues, but they're different things. So if you have overlapping geometry, you'll get these really weird black splotches on your mesh that don't look good and don't really make sense. Usually you're gonna get overlapping geometry when you add something like a bevel and it starts overlapping with the surrounding geometry. This is a good example of where you're gonna run into artifacts the most. Basically what happens is you try to add in a bevel and the bevel rolls over the surrounding geometry as you can see right now. Now keep in mind, if you have a really dense mesh, you're going to run into artifact situations way more often because the bevel doesn't have too much room to move around. But fixing artifacts is actually really easy. If your artifacts are caused by a bevel, all you really need to do is go into edit mode and double tap G and slide the vertices outside of the way of the bevel and the artifacts are going to go away. Alternatively, you can use a bevel shader. So basically what a bevel shader does is it gives this illusion of a bevel on the mesh even though it's not actually there. And you can set that up really easily by going into the cycles rendering engine, adding a material, going into the shader editor, and then dropping in a bevel node. And then you're going to see we get this really nice separation that looks like a bevel but it's actually not. It's basically a shadow that fakes the bevel. I use this technique a lot when I don't want to add in a bevel modifier because it's causing too many artifacts. So instead of using a bevel modifier, I can just use the bevel shader instead and I won't have to run into any sort of artifacts. But sometimes you might actually want to add in a much larger bevel and a bevel modifier simply won't work. For example, take a look at this. I union these two spheres together, but in order to make the fusion look natural, I need a much larger bevel. But if I try to bevel the edges here, the mesh goes crazy because my bevel is overlapping 
with the surrounding geometry. This is actually a good situation to use add-ons, for example, Mesh Machine. Mesh Machine actually has this feature called Offset Cut, which eats the surrounding geometry and gives me space to run the bevel. This is something you can't normally do in Blender, and it's really going to save you from those situations where the artifacts are going crazy. Now, the stuff can get pretty tricky, so I suggest grabbing our Topology Handbook 2.0 course on our website. It's free, and it covers all the fundamentals that you need to deal with these tricky topology situations. I'll link it in the description along with our ebook. So let's go ahead and recap. The main four topics you need to understand hard surface modeling in Blender are bevels, booleans, shading, and artifacts. That's it. If you can understand all of these topics, then you will have mastered hard surface modeling. However, each topic does get pretty deep, which is why I can't cover every single thing in this video. But fortunately for you, my channel covers every single one of these topics. So just go to my channel, type in my name, and then bevels after, or my name, and then shading, and you're gonna see all sorts of different videos on these topics. But most importantly, remember to practice because practicing and running into these situations is the only way you're gonna actually improve. And by the way, if you want some additional resources for hard surface modeling, both free and paid, check out our website, blenderbros.com. We're one of the top resources for hard surface modeling in Blender, and you're gonna learn a ton if you just check out some of our other content. And if you're completely new to this stuff, we have a free beginners course on our website called Hard Surface Modeling and jumpstart you can take that course it's only a few hours long and it'll get you up to speed with blender very quickly i'll link that in the description as well so once you've mastered those four topics hard surface modeling really is that simple so that's it from me thanks so much for watching and all the resources i mentioned in this video will be linked in the description thanks so much for watching and until next time